if you like kind of an urban lifestyle, but you don't want to live right downtown Orlando, you might want to consider Altamont Springs. This was one of the early suburbs of Orlando, but as Greater Orlando has grown, Altamont Springs has become its own commercial center. There's shopping right at your fingertips and all kind of things going on here. This is Crane's Roost Park, Altamont Springs version of Central Park. Evenings after work and school, and on weekends and holidays, Crane's Roost Park is the place to be. <laughs> to spend time with friends and family, walk the dog, participate in organized activities, or just enjoy the beautiful weather and watch the sunset. Crane's Roost Park is at the heart of what the city calls Uptown Altamont, a well-defined town center years in the making, where people can live, work, shop, and relax. The park is one of two landmarks for which Altamont Springs is well known. The other landmark is this, the Majesty Building. Confused? If you live here, this picture requires no explanation. Stay tuned and I'll get back to this in a minute. I'm going to make sure that when you visit Altamont Springs, you are in the loop. So where is Altamont Springs? It's easy to find. Altamont Springs is 15 minutes north of downtown Orlando and in the crosshairs of two of the area's biggest thoroughfares. Interstate 4 and Highway 436 break the city up into four quadrants. The central location and easy access are two reasons why the city is home to one of Central Florida's biggest and most popular indoor shopping malls. The Altamont Mall lies within Uptown Altamont and brings a lot of shoppers and visitors to the area. The proximity to I-4 and Highway 436 are great if your job or your lifestyle keeps you traveling a lot. But you don't have to drive. Altamont Springs has its own stop on Orlando's commuter rail line called SunRail. The 61-mile train line is expected to grow. Plans are in the works to create rail links to both Orlando International Airport and Walt Disney World. SunRail has a park and ride lot for commuters who drive to the station and buses regularly pick up and drop off. And more options are coming. Altamont Springs City Government has a reputation for innovation. The city is about to launch a self-driving shuttle system called BEEP to help people move around the city. A connection to the SunRail station is part of the plans. Living in Altamont Springs is not like a typical suburb. More than half of the homes here are in multifamily communities, condominiums and townhomes and apartments. This is part of the urbanization of the city. Many of these multifamily developments are located in and around Uptown Altamont and their walking distance to the Mall and Crane's Roost Park. The boom time for single-family homes in Altamont Springs was 1970 to 1990, so the median age of single-family homes here is 40 years old. Neighborhoods like Spring Valley with their mature tree canopies and large home sites are still highly desirable. Just don't look for whole neighborhoods of new construction. Altamont Springs is almost built out and starting to rebuild. Even in Spring Valley, people who want a brand new home are tearing down homes from the 60s, 70s, and 80s and replacing them with much larger modern homes. For all single-family homes in Altamont Springs, the recent median sales price was about $390,000. In Spring Valley, that would buy you a smaller home with a smaller yard. The median sales price for condominiums was under $250,000. Meanwhile, within walking distance of the SunRail station, there's some land in need of redevelopment. And there's talk of turning it into multifamily homes with shopping to serve the residents. And no, I did not forget. 
Altamont Springs' other landmark, the Majesty, or as residents affectionately call it, the I-4 Eyesore. This 18-story building on the side of Interstate 4 has been under construction since January 2001. That's right, under construction for almost 22 years and still not done. Millions of babies who were born when construction started have now graduated college. Bill Clinton was the outgoing president when construction began. The Twin Towers were still standing. Why? Why? All we know is that the owner, a religious broadcaster, intended to build it as money came in, with no debt. Commentators have figured that the carrying costs have now been more costly than a loan would have been. And there's no getting away from it. The building, given that its height is out of scale with the rest of the community, can be seen from almost everywhere, including on all social media, where it's our favorite meme. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, you should take a look at this one next where I can explain to you the whole Orlando commuter rail service and show you why it might be a good idea to look for a home near one of the train stations. And don't forget to subscribe. I'm posting new videos every week. See you next time.